It's Facebook Live time. <laughs> Melissa Kerman here with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse for my weekly Facebook Live event, 7 p.m. every Friday, every, I'm sorry, every Thursday evening. Um, and that's Eastern Standard Time. So welcome if you are um, watching live or on the replay or on YouTube. Um, yay, Pam is here. <laughs> your reminder and setting your timer worked. <laughs> yay. Hi, Kathy. Welcome. So good to have you here. So just getting started. Um, uh, introductions and today is going to be my intention to be relatively quick. I've got a few quick announcements, a somewhat quick project, and um, and then I'll have you on your way and um, me too. I've got lots going on which I'll talk about in just a second. So um, <clears throat> anyway, clear my throat. The pollen here is nuts so <laughs> hopefully I'm not gonna have to clear my throat a ton. Hi Kathleen, welcome. So, so good to have you here. So quick announcements um, and like I said there are not very many just a few but they're big. So some of you may be aware that the retiring list um, comes out on Monday, Monday April 15th. So that means anything in the occasions catalog that's not going to carry over and um, anything in the annual catalog that is going away completely, that's retiring. So that's really big news in the Stampin' Up! world because um, once that retiring list goes live, uh, the items are available only while supplies last. So this is particularly an impact if you have in colors, but it could be true for anything that's uh, retiring. But with the in colors, they go super fast. So the 2017-19 colors are going away technically as of June 3rd or until they're gone. So if you have any products that are um, ink pads, you're gonna want the reinkers, cardstock, coordinating items because you won't be able to get them later. Hi Carol, welcome. <laughs> so um, anyway, so that's, uh, that's one of the big announcements. The other that just came out this week is that um, Stampin' Up! is changing some things about their die cutting system and uh, the trimmer. So um, they're doing away with the big shot. They're coming up with their uh, their own. Um, their manu I guess, I don't know if we're gonna manufacture them, but we're gonna have more control over the manufacturing of them and more flexibility with the design. So um, that it's actually, it's coming. So we're not gonna have the big shot or a trimmer um, in the new annual catalog, but new products will be coming. They aren't gonna be there in the annual catalog when it goes live on June 4th. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, all of our current dies and embossing folders will fit into the new um, die cutting system, so you don't have to worry about that. But the new ones will be new and improved, and probably a good fraction of the ones that are in the catalog are going to go away now because they're being reworked. Um, hi, Carol. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> uh, so this is just if you have anything in the occasions catalog or the annual catalog that you really want, I recommend trying to get them before the retiring list even comes out. Um, like I said, once it comes out, um, things go fast. Things can go very fast. Um, so anyway, so the die cutting system, the new trimmer, um, we don't even know. They haven't even told us demonstrators when the new die cutting system is coming out or when the new trimmer is coming out. So we'll, you know, we'll, we'll find out and I will let you know. Um, now one of the cool things about the new die cutting system is um, that they've, they're doing a new design of the dies. And when they announced this, it suddenly occurred to me that because I am demonstrating something at on stage and I have brand new products, that the dies that I have might actually be the new style. And sure enough, I looked at them and they are new. Now I wouldn't have noticed it if they hadn't pointed it out, but when I cut out my dies, it actually um, was, was an improvement as far as how they cut out and getting an even edge around the outside. So that's pretty cool. So you'll hear more about that as, as things develop. But um, we're gonna have a lot more creative control over the dies um, because of the big changes that are coming. So, oh yeah, bringing back the doilies, that would be wonderful. Um, we'll see. <laughs> I'm not holding my breath, <laughs> but we'll see. 
Uh, so let's see, what else should I tell you? Okay, well, so some of you guys may remember that um, On Stage Local is, well, On Stage Live is happening right now in Auckland, New Zealand. That's a three-day event because it's the live event. The On Stage Locals happen all over the world, and the one that's happening here in Charlotte is on Saturday. And of course, all the other On Stage Locals are on Saturday, but just throughout the country and, and in places throughout the world, too. So it's very cool, and you may all remember that I am actually presenting. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting a little nervous, it's right around the corner, but I'm also super excited because um, I've been holding on to this information and this great, you know, stamp set and dies and I haven't been able to share with anybody. It's driving me crazy. So anyway, it'll be really, really fun to finally be able to show it. I, I commented to somebody earlier today, it's like, I'm coming out of the closet with the stamp set and the dies, you know? <laughs> I get to finally uh, show it to the world. So that's gonna be really, really fun. So that's pretty much it, it on the, um, the updates front. Well, I should mention too, the new annual catalog, and you probably gather this, goes live on June 4th. Um, if you're a demonstrator or you join, uh, you'll get to pre-order as of the beginning of May. And those of us that actually attend on stage get to pre-pre-order. So we'll get to order starting this weekend and we'll get our catalog this weekend. So that's super, super fun. So um, with that new catalog, I will be offering, as I always do, my product shares, my taste of a sweet product shares. So the shares will be geared towards, uh, will be designed around the product suites that are in the annual catalog. In the past, they've been um, maybe 14 suites, so that's probably about what they'll be this time. And if you're not familiar with my product suites, I essentially take the consumables in a given suite, um, and that might be you know cardstock, designer paper, ribbon, embellishments, and I break all those up into either, you know, depending on what's practical, three, four, five, sometimes six parts, and I divide it among a group of people that would like to do the product share. So they're really cool because you can spend anywhere from, it's usually 10 to $16 um, on a share, but get a little bit of all those different products without spending the who knows what, 40 or something dollars you might spend if you got full packs of all of it. So um, I love my Tasty Sweet product shares, if I might say so myself. <laughs> uh, it's really wonderful for me too, because I get a little bit of everything too, so super fun. So that'll be coming down the pike, and if you want to be notified um, of when they go live, feel free to comment and let me know, and I will add you to my reminder list, and I will um, be sending an email specifically to those people who are particularly interested in the product shares when they go live with details, and I'll also be sharing it in other places too, but you can count on a, an email specifically about that if you're on my list uh, about the product shares. So, are you guys ready for a project? Yay! <laughs> Always, right? Okay, so we're going to be using the Beach Happy Stamp Set. And uh, let's see if I can do the turnaround thing. Um, where is it? Did I do it? Yay, I did it. I'm just going to have to go back the other way so that I'm not all backwards like it was last time. So there's the Beach Happy Stamp Set. We're also using some of the rectangle um, shaped framelits. <laughs> Um, we're going to be using this one right here, the second to biggest one. Um, and anyway, this is going to be a very beachy, sunny card. I've actually cased this card from a fellow Color Fusers blog hop participant, Tammy uh, Hew Hew Hewlett. Hewlett? <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. Anyways, so it's a really fun, fun card, fun, pretty simple card. It uses some watercoloring. So I'm going to flip around and start the project. Do that first, and then here we go. Yeah, you get to see my ceiling. Okay, so now I got my little black mat down here because I'm gonna be using water so I don't make a mess. Um, get my paper wet. So, um, as you can see, we're using a bunch of different colors. And I'm gonna start with um, doing a little bit of water, water coloring. So now this is the, the uh, shape that I have uh, die cut. So you can see, well, you can't really see the stitches very well because this is the back side, but I'm not showing you the other side. <laughs> and you'll know in a minute why. Okay, so um, this is the, the stitch framelits die. So what I'm gonna show you is the, how I'm gonna do the water coloring on the back and then, um, and then I'll show you the front. So I'm gonna be using my aqua painter 
and I'm going to start with a little bit of my mango melody for the sky, sort of, sort of like a, um, I don't know, a sunset or something. And I'm going to put a little bit of my reinker in the lid. Now, you can really squeeze the ink pad together and get a little bit in the lid, but it's a little bit harder than the old style ink pads, so I just figure, hey, I got a reinker, so that's what I'm going to do. So um, I always wet my cardstock really only in the spot where I want the ink to go to start with. So I only want the Mango Melody um, in the sky because I'm creating the sky. So I'm just going to wet that part only. And always handy to have paper towels around. And I went down a little bit lower than I wanted. Now if you don't wet it, what will happen is um, you get sort of a stuck, the ink sort of gets stuck. It doesn't move around like you can see it's doing right there. Now I'm going to use my paper towel and dab off some of the excess color because I want to soften that yellow, that uh, color just a bit. Don't want it quite that dark. And here's the great thing about watercoloring is that if it's too dark, I can go like this, dab some of it off. So now I got a much more subtle little sky. Okay, so I'm going to dab that off to dry it and I've got a bigger paper towel over here and next um, I'm gonna do my my water so I'm using Bermuda Bay for my water it's right there I got plenty of ink in that lid and again I'm going to just wet it. Now I'm getting off the color and then I'm going to kind of come back in and dab it a little. <coughs> and I'm going to dab off a little bit over here. Get a little bit more darkness play 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 okay so that's pretty much what I want and then I actually I'm gonna add a little bit of crumb cake like it's sort of the sand on the bottom so I'm gonna wet that a little bit add a little of the crumb cake hi Fran welcome see and then just add a little bit of the brown at the bottom so if I miss your comment I will come back and check it out I um, I often don't see the comments because I'm busy looking down at my my card or what I'm creating <laughs> but I will come say hi later if I miss you okay so just a little I'm trying to sort of get a bit of a linear kind of look because I want it to look like the horizon or the ground Look at that cool little, mm, that just happened there. <laughs> and I got some ocean in the sky, too. Don't you love how I can just dab it off? That's actually pretty darn cool. Okay, so um, I am going to go ahead and set that aside for just one second. And hopefully it's going to dry pretty quick. Close up my ink pad. And then here are some of the other parts and pieces. Now, I'm just going to attach this piece to the bottom. It kind of has that feel of the sand on a beach. So I'm going to be using the, um, um, what is it, palm tree image in this set, which I really love. Oh, and I just realized. Okay, I forgot one thing. So I'm going to tear this. So again, that sort of gives it that look of... Um, sand or ground, more natural look than having the straight line. And I'm only going to see the sand on the left and right because the focal piece is going to cover it, but that's okay. I toyed around with doing it straight versus doing the uh, torn piece. So the tearing, I didn't go into detail about the tearing, if you guys do tearing, but I used my fingers to, to take control of it and uh, probably should have done this while I was doing it, but I pulled away from me and what's left is the inside fibers of the tear. And I think that looks a whole lot prettier than the other side, which is, would be this. 
So you, if I had torn it the other way, then you get sort of this almost even. You don't see the inside fibers of the cardstock. So that's my little tearing tip. And I always like to say that when I first started paper crafting and the first time I did tearing, it was just like, what? <laughs> tearing my paper? What kind of sense does that make? But it's a very cool uh, effect in certain situations. So my tip of the week and my newsletter this week, some of you may, um, if you subscribe to my newsletter, I did a tip for sharing, um, for how to use your scrap uh, strips and little pieces of white cardstock. I end up with a ton of them. So I wanted to just show you, and I didn't bring the other stuff over here, but I have this little bin in behind my space. And these are just for the little itty bitty tiny pieces, right? So if I have a little tiny sentiment that's super thin, I have these nice little strips that, these were just pieces cut off of some other project. And so they're really, they really come in handy in the right situation. So the same with this. I used this on a card just the other day. And then I've got this one with some black and other widths of, of strips. Um, and I have a bucket in a big box, actually, in the other room. Because eventually one day I plan to... Um, Hi, Carrie. <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Anyway, so uh, I have a big container of strips because eventually one day I want to make my own paper. And one of my team members has done it, and I know it's relatively easy to do. It just takes time, but I have all this, all these leftover scraps. But So that's one thing I might do with it. But I also have like a million of this width of scrap because it's the leftover from when I cut my ins the insides to my cards, which I cut a lot of. And I think this is a three-quarter inch. But I have a container of, and all my little strips are in baggies. And, um, and then they're labeled by the width of the piece. And then I can always go in. And then if I'm, you know, it just makes things easier. And then I feel like I'm using my scraps, which is so fun. Uh, oh, for on stage, Amy, um, I'm in Charlotte. So, uh, and it's actually, the event is here, which is so awesome. I love it that it's in my own home city. Um, it's going to be so much fun. And um, I'm part of this group in North Carolina called the NC Demos, which is sort of a collaborative, cooperative group. And I've gotten to know so many people in the state because of it, and many of them are going to be there, so it's going to be super fun. Like a big party with like a huge group of friends. It's crazy. I never thought this would be the case for me, but it's, uh, it's just grown into something super fun. So yes, Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where I live, and that's where I'm going on stage. All right, so... There's my base. So I'm, I'm using actually one of these little strips, and I actually cut it down to a very tiny little piece because that's what I'm using on this card. So I'm going to show you doing the sentiment. So I'm using three different colors. I'm using a technique called omitting markers, and that's basically just a way of saying that uh, you can color where you want, how you want, in the parts that you want. So if this, well, this sentiment says... Um, what does it say? Wishing you sunny days. So if I just wanted to use the word sunny or wishing you and then use a sentiment from some other set, I could do that. So, um, but I'm going to use the whole thing, but I am going to color each word a different color with my markers. So that's why it's called omitting markers. I could be omitting some of those images. I'm not, but I am selectively choosing where to color. So I'm bringing it right up there close to the camera. You guys can see. And I'm starting with my lightest color, and that's important because um, whatever I do next, I mean, I might contaminate the, the marker, right? So if I did one of my darker colors first and then went in with the yellow and I touched the yellow to the darker area, then I'd be contaminating my yellow. So I'm starting with the lightest color for that reason. Okay, and then I'm going to do my green. And I've done my green on the word days at the bottom. And then finally, oh, and I did it different. Oh, geez. I'm, oh, no, yellow, yeah. Okay, so now I'm doing blue. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? Okay, and then I'm going to do the Bermuda Bay on the wishing you. So again, if I touch my, the tip of my blue marker on the yellow, sure, I've contaminated my sunny, but I haven't contaminated a, a marker in a way because if there's a little yellow gets on the blue, it's all good. It's not really going to show because it's a darker color. 
Okay, so now people, when you do this emitting marker technique, you can huff on it, which basically means you're, can you hear me? <laughs> Blowing onto the stamp, sort of breathing onto the stamp. But I find that it re-wets a little bit better if you use a very light misting of water. So because you put the ink on here and it dries pretty fast, I'm gonna spray this off camera just from like 12 inches away or something of that sort and just a light misting. You might be able to see some of the mist on the block now. It makes the color get more vibrant because it's re-wetting it essentially so it hasn't allowed it to dry. So, um, I mean, because it otherwise will be sort of dry and grainy. Okay, so now I'm just gonna stamp this it's always a tricky to do these when I'm doing it on video because I can't get my head right over the top. What the heck? Oh, it turned over. <laughs> Did you guys see that? It turned over. There was nothing on this. Like, I just stamped that, I promise. Okay, so here it is. So that's my wishing you sunny days. And let's see, I did one earlier also. They came out pretty similar. It looks like I missed some of my uh, wishing but I have a backup, so pretty cool, right? Anyway, so it's a neat technique for being able to use stamps in different ways, the omitting markers technique. One of the first techniques I think I learned many, many moons ago. All right, let's see if my focal piece is dry, and it actually looks like it is, which is good. So now, haha, I've already gotten one started on the other side. This was the little tricky thing I was, I was saving for you guys. <laughs> So now, I, theoretically, I could use this side too, but you kind of lose the stitching on the back. On the front, you can see the stitching. Can you guys see the stitching? And I've, um, so I've done my little watercolor wash. I didn't do any sand on this one, but my final version has sand, and I'll show you that in just a sec. And then, of course, I did the, the sun up there. So I'm using this image here, the palm tree um, trunk, uh, in a particular way. So when I stamped it here, it was, see how it's oriented the, a different way now? So I did that ahead of time, so it would just be a little bit easier, but essentially, when you have photopolymer stamps, you know, they, you can move them, and I don't wanna move this, but I can lift it up and I can angle it this way or that, and um, so it makes them really flexible, especially with an image like um, this palm tree. So it's pretty cool. So now I'm using my soft suede ink, and I am not going to ink up the bottom, the base, and um, uh, the original, the one that Tammy did, she didn't ink up the base and it looked really pretty, so I just went with it. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to ink it up carefully so that I'm not inking up the base and not even necessarily all the way down. And then I'm going to stamp one of my palm trees over here on the right. Ink it up again, and probably the biggest challenge is remembering not to do the bottom. <laughs> so just like going on and inking it up. And then one right here in the center, well, on the left-ish. All righty. Now I get to come in with one of my favorite images in this set, which is the top of the palm tree. Um, I shared a, an example of using this set with another project a while ago where we did the rock and roll technique. This one we're not doing that, we're just using the granny apple green, but on that one we actually did rock and roll with the mossy meadow around the outside edge and that was really pretty. We're just keeping this one a little simpler. So now when you do this, you'll want to nest the top of the palm tree into the, um, uh, the nook right there so that your palm tree really nests in there well. You see how it's close up. I've done this a few times where it's like floating above the trunk. Who wants a floating, floating palms <laughs> above the trunk? Not me. No, that one's floating a little bit. Pay better attention. So it's almost like you're sort of semi overlapping it a little bit. See how that's different? And notice the, the sun in the background. I just think it's so pretty with that mango melody back there. So there it is. You can see my, <laughs> my floating palm. I will probably take a, a soft suede marker and just kind of make it look like it's touching that because it kind of bothers me that it's floating up there. At least I got, you know, I got three out of the four, right? <laughs> it's okay. It's handmade, right? It's all good. Okay, so next I'm going to take some linen thread. And I've got three pieces here. 
all at the same length. They're just cut at the ends. And I'm going to tie a bow on one end. Now I thought about just doing a regular old tie, you know, just a knot instead of a bow. Um, and, you know, depending on how difficult this is to do on camera, I might just be doing the tie, but we'll see. We'll see how I manage to do it. There we go. It's always a little trickier to tie anything when it's multiple pieces. <laughs> the twine's not too bad for that, but... Let's see what we got. Now, I think what I did when I did it the first time was... Um, I tied a knot, but then it made it kind of bulky. So let's see if I can manage this. This is the hard part. Come on, you can do it. Dang it. Notice it's hard. <laughs> I think I might just be doing the knot. I'll do the knot, and then I'll do the bow. Because that I know I can do. I got my finger resting there on the... Um, on there, trying to hold it in place while I do the other part. Okay, around to make the bow. Still challenging. Anybody else have difficulty with this? Tying bows. I know a lot of my people really hate it when we have bows. Oh, I think I did it. Yay, me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No one will notice. Oh, yes. Oh, you mean the, yes, the palm tree floating. Of course, they'll be laying on the beach, thinking about the beach, paying attention to relaxing, having a cocktail maybe. <laughs> they won't worry about my floating palm tree. Okay, let's see what we got here. So you can do it so that they're even, or you could do it so they're not even, however you want. But then fiddle, fiddle and play, get it to be just the right size, and it doesn't want to do the same. Again, it's a little bit harder when you do it with multiple pieces of the thread. Okay, so next, stop fiddling. I'm going to stop fiddling. Next, I'm going to bow my paper and bring that bow to the far right because it needs to be on the far right. And I think for this one, I'm going to leave it without the sand at the bottom. Just kind of keep it simple. Fanning out my pieces just a little bit. It's all wound up there. I think I have to change that a little. Eh. It's okay. All right, now I'm going to grab my sentiment, the one that I actually did fully inked. Yes, bows are pain. <laughs> and I'm going to put some dimensionals on to, um, I'm actually going to put it on right here because what I want to do is straddle the ribbon or the twine because otherwise it gets kind of bulky and sort of stands up in an uneven kind of way. Okay, come on. This is me, me messing, messing with it, man. Okay, so I'm going to do... And the tricky part, of course, is making sure I got the size just right and the position just right. So I'm not going too high or too low. So that's where it's going to sit. Put another one right up here. And then, yes, just what I want. You know, I actually, most often when I'm doing bows, I do um, an air bow instead of the bow like I just did there because I think they're so much easier because you're not having to hold it tight. Um, you just, you know, you're tying your bow with the two dog ears, you know, like a kid ties their shoes. And I, I just find it to be so much easier. Anybody else like that way too? Comment. Let me know. So there's most of it. And next, all I have to do, it's not such a shame to cover up a piece that I like. Doesn't it look pretty in the back? <laughs> it's okay. I like the front too. And we've got that lovely, the lovely stitch there. I'll show you the one I the other one that I did also. So you can see it with and without the sand. 
And I like to put a lot of dimensionals on here just to make sure it actually stays up. And we are almost done with this. This is the other part, taking off the dimensionals. When I do edited videos, I love to zoom through this part. It's so satisfying. <laughs> Your husband bought you, oh, reverse action tweezers. Hmm, that sounds like a good idea. What do you use those for? Tell us. I think I've seen them before. I might even have some, but I don't know that I ever use them. So you could tell me how you use them. Maybe I'll use mine. Okay, so there we go. There's my, my card, and I'll show you the other one that I did. So there's the first one, which has the sand sort of towards the bottom. I don't know, it kind of grounds it, but I like them both. Let me know if you have a preference. Do you like one or the other more? Anyways, I just think it's a fun set, and as we finally start to get some warmer weather, we're getting super humid weather here in North Carolina. It's uh, in the high 70s, but the fact that it's super humid makes it kind of crazy feeling hot. Anyway, I'm gonna just turn the camera around quick. Say, okay. And here we are. <laughs> Yay, some hearts. I wasn't noticing those before. Yay, thank you, somebody. <laughs> So um, just quick reminders, right? The retiring list coming out Monday. Uh, so you'll be able to find that online. And uh, oh, and I have to tell you. So um, uh, one of the, the projects that I've made using the bundle that I was given for on stage uh, is for um, shh, my team. It's my team who's coming to on stage with me. They get a special gift. Anybody who comes to on stage with me gets a special gift. <laughs> And this one is made with these brand new products, so I think they're gonna love it, and I love it too. So I'm not even planning on sharing it on stage. I have way too much to share, and it, there's gotta be a limit, so um, I only have seven minutes, seven to 10 minutes. So anyway, they're gonna be getting that uh, at the event, and then I am gonna have a blog post and video for that project um, on Sunday. So on Sunday, you can expect to go to my website, see some new product, um, the projects that I, some of the projects I've been working on, well, I'll mostly share the, the team gift and then I'll be sharing, you know, some of the other projects that I made for on stage, you know, in the subsequent days and weeks. <laughs> There's a lot. I think I made 17 things, not counting this gift for my team. And the gift for my team is actually a 3D-ish thing with multiple pieces and parts. So it's definitely different from anything else I've created um, with this bundle. So I'm excited to share. So come back on Sunday and check it out. Um, and I'll probably be trying to check in on Facebook a little bit here and there while I'm at on stage. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'll even go live. We'll see. <laughs> so um, thanks so much for tuning in, whether in the live or if you're coming back and seeing the replay. And I hope you liked the project. This blo the blog post for this project will go live tomorrow. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time, next Thursday. Um, well, I don't even know what the date is. The 18th, maybe? I think it's the 18th. We'll see you next Thursday, 7 p.m. Happy crafting, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye. And now I just have to finish. <laughs> Press the button to go off.